Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh Bond, and welcome to a brand new series. Now, today we are going to be covering humans, and well, starting to dive into humans, that is. Uh, more specifically today, we are going to be dealing with the face. Now, the method that I'm going to be covering today for drawing a face is called Riley's Method. Now, I love Riley's Method. Uh, it's helped me a lot, and basically what it does is it helps kind of map out the planes of the face and make it a little bit more easier uh, to visualize. And it also helps you know which parts of the face you need to be shading. And so we're going to get right into it. So here's how you do Riley's method. First, you're going to start out with a circle. You want to make it as close to an actual circle as you can. So yeah. We'll just draw our circle right now. It's not super pretty, but it's pretty close to what you call a good circle. So what I'm quickly gonna do, you wanna draw a horizontal line halfway through your circle. And then same thing, but vertical. And you want it to, it to extend outside of the circle's bounds. And what we're going to do we are going to divide this face into thirds, as that is what your face is going to be. So we're going to have a line here, and a line here, and assuming that we drew this line kind of right, I suppose it's a little bit high, but this length here should be close to the same as this length here. So yeah, I'm going to just try to get it a little bit more exact. That way it can just work a little bit better. It's important that we get these as close as we can. So there we go. That's what we're going to do for now. And those represent two thirds of the face. Now we're going to do the last third. And it should be about this same distance, just down here, extending a little bit past where the spear is. So I'd say that's about there. And that's perfect. Okay, so now the reason we separate into thirds is because that's how some of the facial structure is separated. This part right here is going to turn into the chin eventually. This is going to turn into the nose. This center line here is going to turn into the eyebrow. And up here is going to be the hairline. And that's how the face is naturally separated. If you look at anyone's face, it's almost always separated into those thirds. And they're pretty close to being an exact third. So we're just going to quickly draw some curves down to that point just to kind of give it more of the shape of an actual head. Awesome. So there we go. We're well on our way to uh, going into this. So now you want to have the entire shape and you want to just draw a line about halfway through it. Well, probably a little bit higher than that. And this is going to kind of be the top of your eyes. And I drew it a bit too high. There we go. So this is kind of going to be around where your kind of in between the eyes and the eyebrows are going to be. So moving on, we are going to draw what is kind of going to be the beginning of the eye socket. Now the eye socket is an important one to draw because it uh, it represents uh, kind of where some important shading is going to be. If you look into an eye socket of a person, it kind of is just a little bit darker than most of uh, than most of the rest of the face. So there we go. That's kind of how we're going to start our eye sockets. And there we go. So that's just the beginning. Now we're going to keep moving on. Now here's an important part, and it is called the glabella. Now the glabella, or glabella is kind of this trapezoid shape right here. And it is kind of the cornerstone of drawing the face. It's going to be right in, kind of in between the eyebrows. It extends down to the nose. It's where a lot of shapes are going to be branching off of. So it's incredibly, incredibly important that we add it and get it right. Now, after drawing that, you're wanting to kind of draw almost a circle, kind of more of an oval coming down from here. 
and that kind of shows where kind of the flat part of the forehead is going to be. And there you go. Now after you've drawn that, you're going to want to move on to the eyes. So an important part about the eyes is when you draw an eye, you want there to be that exact same width between that and the side of the head and between the two eyes. So in total, your head should be five eye widths long. And you want it to just be on this outer corner of our oval that we have here. Same thing on the other side. You want them to be close to the same size and uh, separated just by one of their entire widths. So you just want to make it as close as possible. I'm going to try to make it close. And there we go. I think that's close enough. So there we go. We're well on our way to into this method. Now we're going to keep going and we're going to uh, start by doing a little bit of work on the top of the head. So from the eyes, we're going to draw these lines that kind of go up, kind of in a natural arc of your hand. So, and these are going to be important for the shape of the head. Now, we're going to be kind of shaping the top of our head. What I like to do is imagine a line, a line from this corner of the eye here and make, and touching the edge of this, this oval that we have here. We're going to do that on both sides. And what that does is it tells us where this flat part of the head is. And then we're going to just connect that down here. It should be where your kind of initial circle and these arcs coming off the eyes, that's where they connect. So moving on, um, where we just finished, right here, we want to move that down kind of to where uh, this X is that we created when making the eye socket. And that's going to just help us get a little bit more shape into it. You don't need to make them really straight rigid lines like I did on this side. I was just showing that as an example. You usually want to make them just a little bit more curved. And that gives you just a little bit more of a kind of natural head shape in my uh, perspective, in my opinion. So there we go. We're getting a little bit more of a head shape. Now we're going to focus a little bit on the nose right now. So with this glabella here, what you want to do is just draw straight lines down. And this is kind of going to be the bridge of the nose. Now this triangle, we are going to kind of make it into a triangle, or the line there we want to make into a triangle. Getting a bit ahead of myself. And you want to put a circle there. Now the circle, you want to make the width of the bridge of the nose. And there we go. It's perfect. Now, starting here, where you're, the bridge of the nose is meeting with Bella, you want to make lines that are coming off and reaching the corners of your triangle. And this is kind of going to be where the nose extends to, and it's going to be more of an elevated plane between just the rest of the face and this particular part. There we go, that's nice. So as you can see, it's going along pretty well. We have kind of the top half of our face done. Now, we're gonna be moving on just a little bit farther and starting to work in the mouth area. So starting, we're going to be using this circle that we've just made here. And we're going to kind of make just a little kind of almost muzzle shape. It's gonna be kind of like a teardrop in a sense. It'll just kind of droop down a little bit. Don't try to make sure that it's not flat anywhere. And what this is going to be is going to be kind of where your mouth is going to be and along where your, uh, just where your, where expressions on your mouth are going to be changing. They should be changing along these lines. And there we go. There's kind of our mouth. Now, we're going to make it extend a little bit. Now, this is going to be kind of a plane coming off the nose. It's where some wrinkles happen. And also dimples. Okay. There we go. It's kind of the same shape, just it kind of starts right here at the bottom of the glabella. Now, 
Moving on from the mouth, we're going to do the chin. The chin should just be an oval, but it should come up just a good ways. Now, uh, we're going to get into kind of shading, and we're going to be shading later on. And so, yeah, but some of these parts, like here and here, they're going to be rather important. Moving on, you want to kind of, you can trace a line, but I don't normally do it all the time, but I'll do it just because this is a tutorial. You want to kind of draw a line right there at the top of your chin. And then you're going to have it go back like that. It's not going to be a terribly steep incline. It's, that's just kind of how your uh, jawline is going to work. And then once it gets to that chin line, you're going to have it just make a rather dramatic upturn so that we can connect it to the sides of the head that we've already created. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it should be close. And there you go. That's kind of your basic shape so far. Now we're going to have that natural kind of hand curve again, going up to the eyebrow line from the corners of the mouth. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be plotting out the ears, because the ears, the top of them, should be where your eyebrow line is, and the bottoms of them should be where your nose is. So, here we go, we kind of have our ear, it extends all the way down to the nose. There we go, there's one ear. And here is the other ear. Awesome. So there we go. We're kind of well on our way to finishing Riley's method. So now that we're almost done, what we're going to do now is kind of uh, plot out where shadows are going to be. Because as you can see now, we have all the different planes of the face. But planes are kind of useless unless you actually put shadow into them. So right here is where some shadow is going to be right beside the glabella in our oval here. Now, um, this is kind of where a shadow is always going to be, unless you're having light that's facing you head on. But most of the time, you're going to have shadow in these two parts. They're rather uh, shaded off, closed parts, in between where the eyeballs are and where your glabella is. And they're both raised parts, so that place gets very little light. Also here, kind of in the center, above the lip, that's where you get more shadow. Also here. Now this is going to kind of be underneath your bottom lip. Now that doesn't mean that your bottom lip has to extend like all the way down to here. That would be a little bit ridiculous. You can have it extend a little bit higher. It isn't bound to this one little part, but it does happen, that little shadow part. Also here under the nose is important for shadow, as it is facing down, and therefore is probably not going to be facing into the light source. Here in the eye sockets we're also going to have a little bit of shading. There we go. And now we kind of need to decide a direction for light to be coming on this specific image. And I'm going to say that I'm going to have my light source here, and it's going to be shining down that direction. So, we're going to shade the specific parts on this side of the face. Now, just because light is coming down on that side of the face, um, if it was coming down on the other side, it would just be mirrored onto the other side. So, this part here is going to be shaded, and it'll be shaded a good way down. Um, this here is going to kind of be representing your cheekbone. And so you're going to have all this shaded. Including the ear. You're also going to have the ear on this side shaded, as it is behind the head facing away from the light. And this part here. So, yeah, that is pretty basically how you do the Riley's method. Sorry if I didn't do a great job of explaining, or if I didn't use all of the proper terminology, as there is quite a bit of it. But, in general, that is how you do a Riley's method. 
if you um, do Riley's method a lot, you'll eventually just memorize it, and that is one thing I'd suggest to do, because that way you can just quickly, uh, you don't even need to sketch out Riley's method, you just know how the planes of the face work, and then it'll be automatic for you. And so, like, as you can see, you can already kind of tell um, how the planes of the image are working. You can already, like, I don't even need to show that the light source is here. Like, if I erase this entire thing, and there was no arrows or indication of where exactly the light source was coming from, it's still very clear that the light source is coming from this direction, just because of the shading on that part of the face. And so I find this a really, really nice method to get everything, uh, to get all the proportions correct, and to get the shading correct. Because sometimes people just completely shade a side of the face. They'll think, oh, well, if a light source is coming down from that part, then that must mean just shade that side of the face. That's not how you do it. You need to know your planes of the face so that you can more easily shade the face in a realistic way. You can add things like a neck coming down and then you have your your trapezius muscles here and then they eventually just go out into shoulders and then you'll have some like, your clavicle and everything to create a little bit more shadow too and you can add that for a little bit of additional detail but it isn't specifically part of Riley's method. But we will be going over some of these things in future videos about human and human anatomy. So yeah, that is basically how to do Riley's method. I hope that this tutorial has been useful. If you have any questions, just comment below. Um, if you have any more tutorials or anything specific to humans that you want me to do, let me know. And yeah, thank you everybody so much for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.